Hello, and welcome to my channel. I'm Mandy Grace, the author of a retelling of The Legend of Robin Hood, known as Return to Sherwood, and the sequel, which is coming out in December. I don't know if you can actually see that back there. We have come to the end of October, so um, it's time for me to look back at the books that I read this month and see how many I read, if I read any good ones. I don't know. Basically just talk about books that I read. There's no format here. The first thing that I read very early in October was The Savior's Sister by Jenna Moresi. I loved this book. Jenna is amazing. She's also very adult, so cursing and gore and violence and sexual content, all of it, it's all in all of her books. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend this to just anybody, but um, if the things that I just listed don't scare you off. She is a fantastic writer. And the first one in this series, The Savior's Champion, was actually um, named Book Depository's best one of, what is it like, the 100 best books of all time or something? I don't know. I probably should have looked up what that actually was before I name dropped it in the thing. But anyway, whatever it is, it's awesome. The other book that I read <laughs> this month was Frankenstein. Somehow I had gotten to this, this age without ever reading Frankenstein. I don't know how that happened. But this was amazing, and I loved it and it's one of my new favorite books ever. Also, it was so different than I was expecting. Because I, okay, so I'd never read it, right? But I'd seen different portrayals of Frankenstein's monster on screen over the years. And um, they're all beasts, you know? They like grunt and groan and walk funny and they're not thinking, feeling individuals. They're just monsters, which is not the case in the book. Like, he's incredibly intelligent and, and smarter than I am. <laughs> and he starts out with so much potential. Like, he could go either way. He's so naive and, and sweet and learning about the world, and I just want to, like, hug him and take him home and take care of him. But, you know, he met with people who didn't like him, and villagers were beating him, and people were repulsed by his appearance, and, like, his experiences turned him into a monster. Like, he reacted to the way they reacted, and that's what made it. Like, he wasn't bad. Which shocked me. It also just makes so much sense, you know? Like, he wasn't... Ugh. It's like a whole different story. Whole different story. Because from what I had seen on screen with, like, this moaning, useless beast, um, it's like, the whole story seemed to be about Dr. Frankenstein and the fact that he created a monster. But when I read the book, it was, like, so much more about the monster and, like, how he became a monster. And, like, he's like anybody else. Like, absolutely any other human. Because he starts out with the potential to go either direction. And it's just how he, how he grows up and how he learns about the world and the way people interact with him. And his experiences inform his character. I don't know. It was amazing, and I loved it. I also felt really sad because, I don't know, when he was just like this beast, it was like, okay, we have to get rid of the beast, but now that I've read the book and it's like, no, he could have, like, he could have been good. He would have been saved. This is a tragedy. I don't like it, but I love this book. Also, for some reason, um, just like three days ago, I was craving some like magical Harry Potterness, and I don't really know why I was just like I need to reread those books um so on Wednesday I read all of this the Sorcerer's Stone <sighs> I can't even say the Sorcerer's Stone without getting frustrated that's a pet peeve of mine um I probably should not rant but I just ugh, it drives me nuts so this book <laughs> specifically the, ti the title but also the rest of it um I don't mind when you have to translate from one language to another and like things change to make sense to the language speakers that you're translating to. That sentence did not make sense, but you know what I mean. Um, but the idea that you have to translate from English English to American English because Americans are too dumb to understand, like that irks me. And maybe they needed to do it for the average populace marketing, I don't know. But for me specifically, as a reader, it just makes me feel like people must think I'm an idiot because I don't, I wouldn't know what a Philosopher's Stone is. And that's what bugs me specifically about this book. <sighs> the title. They had to change the title. The Philosopher's Stone is a thing. 
it's like an established artifact in lore or whatever and and they had to rename it because Americans would not understand what it was I'm looking it up now the earliest known written mention of the Philosopher's Stone is from 300 AD it's a thing it's an established thing and they changed it for Americans because we're too dumb to understand anyway I okay I'm not gonna rant about it but it bothers me. I can't even read the title of the book without being like, thank you for thinking I'm an idiot. I also, I don't have a physical thing to show you, but um, I also, <laughs> okay, so I read Frankenstein or, um, for a book club. Leading up to the book club, there were a lot of people discussing books and things and saying that Frankenstein was on Audible and like various things. And so in that conversation, somebody mentioned <laughs> that there are books that are narrated by Richard Armitage on Audible. And several years ago, I got Audible and used it for like a month or two and then was like, I don't really do the whole audiobook thing because I'm very visual. I have to see things. Um, so I just, I stopped and unsubscribed, stopped using it. I was like, I don't, I don't really do audiobooks. And then this person mentioned that Richard Armitage narrates things on Audible. So I re- subscribed I don't know if that's the correct terminology but anyway I got my audible active again just so I could find things that were read by Richard Armitage I have a problem but it's fine so what I ended up <laughs> what I ended up listening to were classic love poems narrated by Richard Armitage um, there were things by Shakespeare and Edgar Allan Poe and I can't remember the others but many 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 classic love poems narrated by Richard Armitage so that's also on the list of things that I read this month. But, um, yep, there you go. That's my stack. Plus the audiobook. At some point, <laughs> I keep getting, I either go back to, like, old favorites or I keep getting new books. Um, but at some point I am going to deal with the giant stack of unread books, which is no longer a giant stack because it was about up to my waist, I think. Anyway, I've separated it out. I don't know how much the camera can see, but it's down here in three stacks. And at some point, I'm actually going to read these and stop buying more books. So, these three belong to somebody, and I've read one of them, but I intend to read the other two before I give it back to the said person. This one I've already read belongs to somebody else. I haven't given it back. These are my unread. And these are unread. And these are unread. I find it impossible to put books on my shelf if I haven't already read them because I want books on my shelf to be books that I actually want, books that I enjoyed, you know, that sort of thing. So they stay off of the shelf until I read them, but I keep buying new books instead of reading the stack of books that aren't allowed on my shelf yet. It's a problem. It's a very big problem.